Okay, so part three here. Um, Christian Bale is also the guy who plays Batman in The Dark Knight Rises and The Dark Knight and whatnot. But it just really stuck out to me. I remember that Christian Bale also played Moses on the new movie called Exodus. So there's a complete Exodus Moses theme with Levi's Stadium. Also the Batman theme. It's amazing how all this ties together. Christian Bale even played Moses. And then I also talked about on ESPN a lot of the ads for when you clicked on some of the teams. A lot of the ads that would pop up is for the new film called The Finest Hours. And the, it was like the short trailer and there's one that says, the lady says, there's a storm coming. Just like when she says, there's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne, and there's nothing you can do to stop it in The Dark Knight Rises. Interesting storm adds up to 85 as well. So, you know, a lot of people have talked about the Super Bowl coming down to the white Bronco versus the Black Panther. It, with all the race, the race war type stuff in the news, the Abraham Lincoln Civil War type theme. Just seems interesting, you know. I had thought about it, but the Chiefs really threw me off there. But um, it really completely makes sense, though, that I was thrown off because listen to the end of the Cardinals-Panthers game. Listen to what the, the announcers say. I mean, literally, so they talk about the old school versus the new age. A lot of people have been talking about the uh, the fifth age, the new age. That's why Obama's doing the V when he's giving his speeches and whatnot. So interesting, it's the new age versus the old school. Also interesting, they show you number 58 right there after they say that. But they say there's a lot of storylines for both teams. I mean, why would they say that? It's because there is a lot of storylines. They're putting Batman... They're putting Back to the Future, the 85 Bears. I mean, there is a lot of storylines. And then we have, you know, the White Bronco versus the Black Panther, which also sticks out, you know, because FX even has a new series coming out called American Crime Story that comes out on February 2nd. And it's uh, it's called The People versus O.J. Simpson. I mean, O.J. Simpson, right? Got away in the White Bronco and whatnot. Just interesting, O.J., O.J. Simpson was number 32. Broncos adds up to 32. He, I mean, he, fi he finished his career with the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, come on. Everybody remembers this, um, him driving away in the white Bronco. And, you know, his trial was one that, you know, it caused racial division and whatnot. It was a, a big trial. Lots of Everybody remembers it. If you're from the United States and you're a little bit older, I mean, you have to remember that story. But... One of the things that stuck out to me with OJ, and I mean it doesn't necessarily have to mean anything, but I, I remember him mostly for being in the movie Naked Gun. I think he was in all three of them. I was just thinking of Naked Gun 33 and a third, and 33 and a third is 33.3, which once again reminds me of Philadelphia. But this movie also, the bad guy is Fred Ward, right? So another Batman reference, Ward. This guy... Uh, is literally in the movie called 10.5. It's a made-for-TV movie about the big West Coast earthquake. He actually dies in the movie trying to uh, put nuclear bombs down in the fault line or whatever. He's also in the movie The Adventures, Time Rider, The Adventure of Lyle Swan, which just blows me away because that movie had the Mandela effect happen to it. It, it literally used to be called The Time Rider of... Lynn Swan, and somehow now it's called the Time Rider of Lyle Swan. I've even made videos on this. It seemed like it, it got changed after 2011 somehow, but, you know, it's just like the Berenstein Bears are now the Berenstain Bears and whatnot, so. Also, in this movie, the part three, he's going to bomb the Academy Awards. So just wanted to point out the Academy Awards in 2016 are on February 28th this year. Also, in the first Naked Gun movie, there's a bomb plot at the Major League Baseball game, and they're trying to kill Queen Elizabeth II. So, once again, interesting. I've talked a lot about Queen Elizabeth. She's really coded to the number 52, even became queen in 52, age 25, Demir. Tons of other stuff with it. But on the day before the Super Bowl, it will be her 64th anniversary of being queen. So, interesting 
46 and 64 mirrors, 46 dealing with Chicago. Also some interesting things, the Black Panther Party was formed in 1966 in Oakland, California. Oakland and the San Francisco Bay Area where Golden State Warriors play and whatnot. But 1966 was the same year the Church of Satan was founded in San Francisco as well. Also, I didn't put any clips of it in here, but in the Panthers-Cardinals game, at 4.45 in the second quarter, number 21 on the Cardinals, fumbled the punt, recovered by number 21 of the Panthers. Then the next play of the drive, number three, Carson Palmer fumbled, causing the third turnover of the Cardinals, and it was even recovered by number 33, his last name was Boston, of the Panthers on the 31-yard line. And then Newton threw an interception to number 21, a little bit later or whatever. I mean, the next play or whatever, the next drive. Also, the halftime score was 24-7. to That adds up to 31. Just like when the Panthers played the Seahawks, uh, the score was 31 to nothing at half. That adds up to 31. Lots of 31 dealing with winning and whatnot. I mean, Alex Smith won his 31st game as a Chief when he beat the Texans. Also... This year, the NFL is on CBS. NFL on CBS adds up to 31 and 85. The last time that the Super Bowl was on CBS was Super Bowl 47, the one where there was the blackout. So, really sticks out. Also wanted to point, like, throw this in here, I guess. I looked up the factors of 923. A lot of this seems to be coded to Pope Francis's visit. And the 329 is 923 backwards and whatnot. The 88th day. I mean, tons of other stuff with this, but the factors of 923 are 1, 13, 71, and 923. So, interesting, the 71, you know, goes with Super Bowl 50. It's even called the Golden Super Bowl. Moses, the Ten Commandments. I said, you know, Levi Stadium. Moses is in the tribe of Levi. If you write out 71, it equals 144. Just like the 12 tribes, 12 times 12,000, 144. The New Jerusalem is 144 cubits in the Bible. Um, also, if you include the end date, 1129, to uh, the Super Bowl is 71 days. This is the day that Philadelphia became 333 years old. Also, the same day that Kobe Bryant announced his retirement. A lot of that has to do with the number 55. The date numerology of this adds up to 55. Kobe shot an air ball. At the end of the game, air ball adds up to 55, retirement adds up to 55. So, interesting. I noticed that the, the Broncos are in their 55th season. Doesn't necessarily have to mean anything, I just want to keep looking into it, but maybe it's just foreshadowing the retirement of Peyton Manning. But I uh, want to keep looking before I really make a prediction here. But 71 days after the Super Bowl is the 109th day. If you write out Philadelphia Earthquake, it equals 109. Also, the San Francisco Earthquake of 1906 was 109 years ago until October of this year. Also, if you just write out the, the prime factor numbers here, 1, 13, 71, 923, it adds up to 223. Just like the word Masonic, the Synagogue of Satan, Friday the 13th. You know, lots of stuff, lots of bad things connected to this number. In regards to the 13, it sticks out to me with the Panthers. The Panthers lost to the Atlanta Falcons, with the, and they scored 13 points. And they're also coded a lot to the Bears, the 1985 Bears, which, interesting, the Bears' only game that they lost that year was in Week 13. Also interesting, the number 13 in Gematria, the small way, adds up to 45. The date numerology of the Super Bowl, 2 plus 7, plus 20, plus 16, even adds up to 45. Also interesting about the number 13, the 13th prime is 41. Super Bowl adds up to 41. Lots of 41 connections. Broncos even equal 41, with the S exception. Uh, interesting, too, the Panthers, during the regular season, they scored 31.3 points a game. Also, stemming back to last season, when they beat the uh, the Cardinals, that was their 13th home game win in a row. And then, like I said, the only game they lost this year, though, was 20-13 to to the Falcons. So, I'm not exactly sure what that 13 uh, represents fully. Just need to do more research into it. But the last interesting thing I want to point out on here 
is that this year's playoffs is the first time that uh, every seed, like look at it, five and four, six and three, five, four, six and three, all of the seeds match up. Five and two, six and one, five and two, six and one, two and one, two and one, and then one and one. That has never happened since there has been a wild card. This is the first time that's ever happened on this bracket. Also, the last time that it did happen was in 1976, or the 1976-77 playoffs, and they didn't have a wild card. So, just found that interesting. Haven't figured out if that actually means anything or, you know, it's just pretty interesting. The first time it's ever happened is this year. They didn't have seeds the previous year either. They were, it was based on like home field advantage or whatever. So, just felt like pointing that out. And, uh, Gonna leave it at that. Have a good one.